I just painted live in front of the camera. It is harder than you think, and um, well, there is a lot of room for quality improvement, but well, I keep it honest and I'll show it because it is a small guide to how to paint M90 camouflage, or sort of, um, that I find useful because it's a camouflage that looks quite nice down at tabletop range. And it's also a live usage of Instar paints, which I think there is way too little of here on YouTube. Anyway, here it is. Today we're doing something slightly different. I I want to finish this uh, veteran here from the Phobos team. The last one from the Phobos challenge that I didn't have the time to do. So I will just wrap them up now. And while at it I thought, you know what, I'll just share my little thoughts on making camouflage on miniatures in general and also show you how I do my M90 camouflage inspired by the Swedish sort of fractal, what do you call it, the splinter camouflage. That is quite famous I guess because it's pretty much the only one in use today in the world. So I will tell you how I do it uh, because it's quite simple and that is the twofold reason why I like it. It's quite simple to produce and at the same time it looks kind of good down at the tabletop because this camouflage is actually produced. They, they actually developed it to be used at quite long ranges because that often happens in Sweden. So you know somewhere, oops, 500 meters or something like that instead of other camouflage it's more you know small patterned. So this is intended to break up the surface of something. It works quite well you know but most importantly here it's actually quite useful down at the well useful uh, it's actually quite good looking down at the tabletop as well so how do I do this well of course you're gonna have a green base coat like everything else here and the colors you need is a green base coat you need a darker green a brighter gray it's actually in the actual pattern it's beige or however you pronounce that in English um, and then you also need a so what seems to be a black that's actually a really dark navy so I reproduced that here by using half black and half blue but in I mean in reality you don't even see it you can use black but I will use blue because well it's gonna be a correct one so how do we do it well we start out with the intended color there I started using these paints from Instar paints mixing it up um, and I'm actually quite happy with that like that and we will need two blue And what? Something half? Excuse my writing, if it's half a black, it should be pure black. So, just a little dash of that. The black is as, as all blacks are pretty much, uh, pretty potent there. You mix it up and it will all turn black. Nope. You see, that little dash of black turns it all black. But we're gonna use that here. And this is a quite simple step. You just start with little triangle somewhere. See if I'm right in the... yeah, that's right. Hmm. 
It's a bit lacking today, the potency of the color here. And then you make sort of another one somewhere. You should actually be quite random here. Just put it wherever you feel like. And then let's make a third one. Like that. Then we will start to sort of connect these by making new triangles. They shouldn't be sort of just connecting, they should be slightly off like this. And it doesn't matter, you know, now it looks like one straight line here. That was not intentional, that was just something that happened. And then we just keep on doing this stuff. As you can see, I do not have to be that neat at all here. And then we make another one down here as well. Like that. And so it's quite shiny here. Let's see. Yeah, this is this is it. Just keep making little triangles, connecting them all together. Yes. And then we have another one. Perhaps like this. The main thing is to keep them, you know, quite the same size not necessarily exactly but some can be a bit pointier and some can be a bit more like a square and they just should be kind of square or straight edge I mean that's the important thing and then we have another one up here can be just a little pointed thing and something like you're looking to cover roughly half the the bright green with this stuff this is quite fine actually um, why I started with three different one not connected is that it's much easier to make a sort of random pattern if you don't, humans always do not random stuff. So it's much easier if you make three things that you don't know beforehand that you can connect in a nice human way. You just randomly put them there. Of course, nothing is random when it comes to human, but well, as random as it gets. Let's see, just fill up the last one there. This is a really nice thing with the, the Instar paints here, it's that they dry really fast, so you can just move on to whatever you want. Like that, whoops. Technical issue, we're back. Perhaps slightly off camera there, but oh. I'm not really used to painting in front of the camera, I can tell you that. So we're just switching colors here. Now we need the the bright gray here, or the warm gray. I have already prepared a light gray. Let's take a drop of that. Whoops, that became two. And then we need some yellow and magenta as well. Already got the yellow. Uh, should be quite not that much of it. And magenta. That's probably it. 
just to bring up the warmth a bit. Let's see where's my little mixing pin here. Let's bring in that little that second drop of grey there as well. Okay, this really becomes a yellow, so let's put some more grey in there. The grey is also just produced from, I don't know, 10 white and one black. Yeah, that's good enough for our purposes. Let's move on. Okay, so now we're looking to cover sort of the transitions between these or just cover up a lot of places, but not too many. Now we're looking to cover roughly 25% of the surface with these things with this color and we do the same thing we're doing we're doing triangles here at this stage you have to be a little bit more neat because you can at the first stage when you're doing the the green ones the dark green ones if you fail if you think they look really ugly like this batch up here you can always just print them over or paint them over with some of the bright gray, the warm gray, because it will cover anything here. Like this. But you don't have to be that neat either, it's, it's still just a rough triangle. And then we have one down here perhaps. Yeah, I think we need two more, two halves perhaps. Like this area up here needs one. That's a shame. There was a nice pattern there with the, the green ones. Let's see, and up here perhaps as well. And let's just go back and reinforce these. If you're better than me then at doing this, you will also have a better result, I guess. But, I mean, it's tabletop. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're that exact. Yes, perhaps, or perhaps a slight one down here as well. Just as if the pattern is actually extending down there. Yeah, I think that's good. Let's not wrap, shake the whole camera and top it over once more. And then we'll go in for the really dark navy. Which means one black. and one blue. You will magically see the blue disappear now. Yeah, to be quite honest, there is actually a hint of blue in there. Now we just take this one and now we should have a little bit less than the gray ones. and. Uh, often prefer to put them sort of next to the gray. <clears throat> to be sort of the shadow of the gray. Not exactly, but... 
it is the highest contrast that we get there so here we have something we need to break up this monotone piece here it should also be triangles but a lot of them often end up being more like slivers little pointed things I, I think they're called slivers right who cares little pointy triangles rather than big blotchy and there we get one right straight here and then right there hmm I'm not too happy with that one but well who cares it's camouflage it's supposed to be looking like the mess that's in the forest if you're fighting in the forest I mean of course these camouflage can this pattern can be used with any colors it doesn't have to be just forest camouflage it's actually quite nice looking with the urban camouflage and the snow camouflage is perhaps even more famous for being good looking than the first one something like this and we're done that's pretty much it I think I used a lot, bit more grey in this one and then we just finish off the the rim as well I can do that right now let's go back to the, the green here the dark green because I think that's a nice color to outline the whole thing with no screw that let's jump one minute into the future because now he is done or at least the M90 camouflage. Uh, I think I used way too much grey here and uh, this one looks better but well it doesn't really matter. It's per perhaps because the the extra thing there is still painted white. It looks very bright um, but this should be random you know and that's as I stated uh, that's the, pretty much the same the random thing here or the major thing here. They should be random and they're quite easy to produce as I just showed so to recap while I speed paint some pink M90 first paint a medium intensity base color second make a few random sharp edge triangles in a darker color three connect those triangles by making more dark triangles until roughly half the surface is covered 4. Cover a rough quarter of the area in uh, light color triangles. A good rule of thumb is that there should be about as much space between them as they are big, if that makes sense. 5. Add a few really dark slim triangles. About as many as the light ones, but perhaps only half their size. Done. Now, don't go drop them in the Swedish forest because they will be a pain to find unless of course you they're done in pink like in this one anyway thank you for watching and until next time don't forget to enjoy your hobby